We're on the June 2010 exam, page 15. This is the last page. We're almost done. We're going to base our answers to questions 69 and 71 on the information given. A monochromatic light ray, one color, mono one, chromatic color, light ray. And they tell you the frequency, and they always tell you this frequency, 5.09 times 10 to the 14 hertz, because your table of indices of refraction is based on that one frequency. Different frequencies of light bend different amounts. That's how a prism works. Different frequencies bend different amounts. And so they can't very well give you just any color of light. They have to tell you an exact color of light because on this table of absolute indices of refraction, it's going to be for that particular color of light. So don't let that uh, mess you up. It's really not germane to the question. It's traveling in, a, in air and it's incident on the surface of a rectangular block of lucite, air and lucite. Question 69 asks you simply to measure the angle of incidence to the nearest degree. Keep in mind the angle is always measured to the normal. So you always want to measure to the normal. Make it a little bit bigger. Here's my ray of light. I make it a little bit longer. Try to be very, very careful. And then I put my protractor down, line it up with my normal, my zero lines lined up with the normal, and I'm reading 10, 20, 30, 40. I'm going to go with 50 degrees. Uh, they had degrees already there, 50 degrees. Calculate the angle of refraction of the light ray when it enters the lucite block. Show all work, including the equation and substitution with units. So my equation is n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2. So I'm in air, and the index of refraction for air is 1.00. Going into lucite, index of refraction of lucite is 1.50. So n1 is 1.00, n2 is 1.50. My angle of incidence is 50 degrees. I'm looking for my angle of refraction. N1 sine theta 1 equals N2 sine theta 2. Do algebra. I want to get theta 2 by itself, so I divide both sides by N2. Then I have to take the inverse sine of whatever answer I get, and that gives me theta 2. So 1.00 times the sine of 50 degrees divided by 1.50. Don't forget you're going to have to take the inverse sine of that. I get 0.51. Oh, wait a minute. That's the sine of the angle. I want the inverse sine of that. And I'm coming up with 30.7. Let's call it 31 degrees. 31 degrees. What is the angle of refraction of the light ray as it emerges from the lucite block back into air? Now it's only worth one point, so they just want the number. 31 degrees. And uh, so they would be alternate interior angles. So now I'm going at 31 degrees from 1.50 into 1.00. I'm going to get an angle of refraction that's going to be uh, parallel to my original ray of light. It's going to be 50 degrees. And there's a whole geometric proof that you can go through, but uh, it's only worth a point. So just go ahead and put down 50 degrees, whatever you had there. Questions 72 through 75, based on this information. A mercury atom absorbs a photon of energy. An electron in the atom changes from energy level D to energy level E. Energy levels? Oh, oh wait a minute. I bet you I've got a chart of energy levels somewhere. Yep, there it is, energy level diagrams, and they have mercury. Also have hydrogen, but we're using mercury. And let's see, it went from energy level D to energy level E. So it went from 4.95 EVs to 3.71 EVs. Question 72, determine the energy of the absorbed photon in electron volts. Well, the energy is going to be the change in energy level. And so I'm going from, what do we say, 4.95 to 3.71.
and so 4, 2, 1, 1 1.24 EVs. And EV is the units on the chart, so we don't have to do any converting there. Oh no, 73. Express that energy in joules. Well, they helped me out by asking it as two separate questions. They could have just asked, what's the energy in joules? And I might have been tempted to write down 1.24. But now I've got to know that there's some kind of conversion from EVs to joules. So, uh, well, let's go look at the front of the formula sheet. And here we go. One electron volt is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. So I've got this conversion factor. 1 EV is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. Do I multiply or divide? Well, I want to get rid of EVs, so I need my conversion factor to have EVs on the bottom. So I simply say uh, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 joules is the same as 1 EV. And so now I just multiply. So it's 1.24 times 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 joules, and that will give me my answer. And that's uh, 1.98 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. They got the units there for me. Question 74. Calculate the frequency of the absorbed photon. Show all your work, including the equation and substitution with units. Well, let's see. We know the energy of the photon is 1.98 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. We've got to find a photon equation, and there we go. Energy of a photon is equal to HF. So let's see, what's H? Hmm. H is Planck's constant. Planck's constant is 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds. And so the equation was energy is equal to HF. They want to know F, so I divide both sides by H. So now I plug in 1.98 times 10 to the negative 19 joules divided by 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds. I come up with a frequency equal to 2.99 times 10 to the 14 now my units are per seconds, so you could just go ahead and write over seconds, but frequency is hertz. Hertz, oh that's right, hertz is waves per second. So uh, per second is the same thing as hertz, so I could simply write uh, 2.99 times 10 to the 14 hertz. Either way is acceptable. In question 75, based on your calculated value of the frequency of the absorbed photon, determine its classification in the electromagnetic spectrum. And here we go, the electromagnetic spectrum. And let's see, what did we have? About 3 times 10 to the 14? Well, that's uh, 5, 4, 3.8. It's below red. We go up to the bigger scale, and here we are in the infrared end of the spectrum. So we're going to call it infrared. Now, if this was a college-level problem, they would give you the first bit of information, and they would ask you what kind of light it was. You would have to do all of these steps on your own to reach this conclusion. And it would seem like a harder problem, but in fact, it's the exact same one you just finished doing. All right, well, good luck on your exam.